This man was what? This man was rich. How rich was this man? This man was richer than J. Paul Getty. This man was richer than Bill Gates. This man was richer than Donald Trump. He had everything that he ever wanted. Houses, he had homes, he had property, he had numerous amounts of wealth. Not only was this man rich, but this man had time on his side. Because this man was also... He had time on his side, this man was young. This man had wealth from his youth, and he had all the time in the world to spend his money. Not only was he rich, not only was he young, but this man was also... The what? The boss. Exactly. This, oh, sorry, I forgot to go in there. Here it goes. That makes it better for you. This man was the boss, okay? He had people who served him, but not only did he have people who served him, but he also served himself. All right? He was rich, he was young, he was the boss. And many of us may think, you know what? I don't have it all, but I sure wish I would have it all. And we ask the question that most often comes up, and that question is... If only, if only I was rich, then I could do everything I wanted to. If only I had time on my side and was young, then I would have all the time in the world to do what I wanted. If only I was the boss, people would listen to me. Well, guess what? All of these things are temporary. They will all pass away. Your riches are going to fade. Your youth is going to fade. A position in this economic times can all fall away. And ultimately, if we put our trust in these temporary things, we know that when everything fades away, we'll ultimately have nothing. Now, this rich young man was very similar to a man in the Bible. And there was a rich young man in the Bible that came up to Jesus and he said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, keep in mind, this guy was wealthy, he was young, and he had servants below him. And Jesus said what? Why do you call me good? There is no one good but one. And he said, follow the commandments. And the rich young ruler said, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not commit murder. You shall not steal. You shall not tell false witness or repair false witness. You shall not tell lies. Honor your father and mother. Treat your neighbor as yourself. And the rich young ruler said, I've done all of these things since my youth. And Jesus said, there's one thing you still lack. Go and sell all you have and give to the poor. Then you'll have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And the Bible says that the rich young ruler went away sad. Why did he go away sad? Because it says it knew he had great wealth. Now all of us are keeping things in the temporal if we're thinking about rich, young, and the boss. We're like that rich young ruler. He went away sad. Is it wrong to have money? Absolutely not. Is it wrong to have great possessions? Absolutely not. But the rich young ruler faced the same problem that we all have, and that is he put his wealth before God. He put his wealth before this gentleman right here. He put his wealth over God. And the Bible calls that anything that's a rebellion against God's character and nature as what? Sin. Sin. It's called sin. It's a violation of God's character and nature. Now, the rich young boss kind of knew that, and that's why he went away sad, because not only was he rich, he was young, and he was the boss, but he was also full. He was full of his possessions, and he was full of his, himself. Serving himself rather than serving Almighty God who is perfect. And the Bible says that we must be perfect if we are to be reconciled to God. So I want to give you a quick, simple test. We have the same problem as the rich young ruler. We're not serving God. 
We're serving ourselves. So how many of you have ever told a lie? Be honest. Okay? How many of you have ever stolen anything? All right. How many of you have dishonored God? Texted OMG? Used his name as a curse word? Yeah. How many of you have murdered anybody? Ah, no hands are raised. Let me tell you something. The Bible not only says that the physical act of murder, but Jesus said if you hate your brother, call him a fool, an idiot, a moron, it's the same as committing adultery in your heart. Murder. So how many of you have done, or murder, excuse me, sorry. Murder in your heart. So how many of you have done that? All right. Thanks for being honest. So, if sin is a violation of God, I want to share with you, much like this rich young ruler, sin has actually placed a barrier between us and God. It's created that barrier that says we cannot get to God because of our sin, because we're not perfect. All right? So you may be thinking, yeah, but guess what? I've given money to the poor. Great. It's only going to get you so far. I go to church every Sunday. Great. Get you a little further. I feed the homeless. Fantastic. And it only gets you a little bit further. And the Bible says that all of our righteous deeds are like filthy rags in the sight of God. There's nothing we can do to break that barrier ourselves to get to God. So we all have God's penalty for our sins, which the Bible calls eternal damnation in hell. All right? But God didn't want to keep you there. God provided a provision for you. Now, you may be thinking, yeah, but guess what? I have riches. I do all these good things. But the Bible also says, what should it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? The Bible also says that if you love your life, you will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will surely find it. So how do we do that? We can't get to God, so God made a provision for us. He came down in the form of a man 2,000 years ago as Jesus Christ. He came down to pay the penalty that we couldn't pay so that we could be reconciled to God. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. God said, I am holy. If you want to get to me, be holy. But guess what? We can't because of that barrier. God also said, if there's no bloodshed, there's no forgiveness of sins. Those are God's requirements. So he sent himself as the God man, Jesus Christ, to come down to pay the penalty for our sins. He lived a sinless life. And you know what? They crucified him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. And while he was there, he bled and he died. Fulfilling what the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Now we're coming up on Resurrection Weekend. Not only did he bleed and he died, but they took him down off that cross and they put him in a tomb and they left him there for three days and on that third day miraculously the tomb opened up and when the tomb opened up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from that tomb defeated death defeated hell so that we may have eternal life now you may be thinking that's all well and good. How do I do that? I realized that sin created that barrier. I realized that Jesus Christ has died for my sins. What do I do? Well, the Bible says that there's two things that you must do to inherit eternal life. You've heard the term repent. I'm going to put it up here because it's a little bit shorter. Turn. The Bible says to turn. Repent means a change of mind, which leads to a change of heart, which leads to a change in your soul. You get to see sin as God sees sin. The Bible says that in times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere 
to repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man he's appointed. And he assured us that because Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He rose from death. So we need to turn. Turn from our life. Turn from our sinful life and turn to Jesus Christ. The other thing that we need to do is we need to trust. Like a parachute. We need to trust in Jesus Christ's blood atoning sacrifice. That means his penalty for our sins. We need to put our life in Jesus Christ's hands because he paid the penalty for our sins. If you have turned and trust and put your faith in Jesus Christ, you can have eternal life that the Bible talks about. Now, I don't want to necessarily tell you to make a decision today. I'll take that one. <laughs> I don't want you to make that decision today. I don't want you to join a church that I go to. I don't want any money from this. <laughs> what I do want you to do is consider what we've talked about and to consider your eternal salvation. Where are you going to spend eternity? There's only two places. God's judgment or God's penalty. Heaven or hell. There's no in between. Please consider it. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The Bible also says it's appointed a man wants to die and then to face the judgment. You will face the judgment either as Jesus Christ as your Savior or as Jesus Christ as your judge. Choose this day whom you will serve. I want to thank you for listening to me. And if you do have any questions, I have some brothers in the back here who will be more than happy to answer. We have some literature on the table here. And I also have some literature. If you have any questions, if you definitely would like to know more, please talk to us. Have a great day at the Expo. Thanks for listening. Thanks.